The general surveyed his audience, and they hung on his every word. He began, you see me now as a retired general. What you don't realize is that I began like anyone else, first as a lowly private, then as a lieutenant, and I rose through the ranks. This story happened when I was a lieutenant and in charge of a group of soldiers, and we found ourselves one night in the city of Polna'a. And my soldiers asked me if they could have the night off for a little R&R, some rest, relaxation, recreation, and I said, okay, just make sure to be back here in time for lineup when we count you, and we make sure that you're ready for tomorrow's duty. And they all said yes, except as young men sometimes are, they did not all show up when it was time for lineup, and four of them were missing. And so I had to go and look for them through the town. It was close to dawn in a sleepy town that was occupied mostly by Jewish people. And I looked and I saw that most of the houses were dark, but there was a light coming from one of them. So I went to the door and I turned the doorknob and was surprised to find it open. I opened the door and before me was a very beautiful sight. There was a table that looked like it had been the scene of a real feast with crystal and silver and the finest tablecloth. And at that table were the remains of the meal that clearly had been consumed by many people close to each other on their holiday. And at the head of the table, with his head sunken on his arms and a long beard that made him look holy as did the white garment that he was wearing, was a man who clearly had to be a rabbi and a very holy man. And he looked like he was asleep. And as I looked around the room and tore my gaze from the rabbi, I saw my soldiers. But they were really as I had never seen them before. Each one looked stranger than the one before because they were frozen into grotesque positions. One was standing like this, and one was standing like that, and a third was standing like this, and the fourth was glued to the floor like this. And they, I ordered them to move, to line up, to march, and they wouldn't say a syllable. And I turned to the rabbi at the table and I said, Rabbi, do you know anything about why my men cannot move? And he said, as if from the midst of a dream, maybe they've stolen something from the table. And so I began to search them. And sure enough, in the pockets of each man, I found a silver cup pieces of silverware, precious crystal, and as soon as I took these stolen objects out of their pockets, my soldiers were able to walk again, all except one. And I said, Rabbi, I've taken all of the items out, I've returned them. I apologize profusely for my men, but why can't this last one walk? And he said, Perhaps he has something in his shoe. And sure enough, he had taken a butter knife and had put it in his shoe, hoping that he could be undetected and take just one more treasure away to sell. I took it out and he too was able to walk. And I realized that this was no ordinary rabbi. I realized that this was a holy man and that my men had stumbled in upon his holy feast and holiday, and they had thought that he was asleep and that they could simply take advantage 
of an old gentleman, unguarded by anybody, on a night that he was vulnerable, and take items from his house. And so I turned to the rabbi and I said, Rabbi, please forgive my men. They will be disciplined for what they did, and thank you for giving them back to me. But now I ask you for one thing. Could you give me a blessing? And the rabbi turned to me, and he said, Yes, I will give you the following blessing. The blessing is that you will live a long and eventful and successful life. But you will know that the time of your end is near when something happens that makes you have a need to retell this story to people who do not know me. And I thanked him, and I took my men, and I left that holy place. And I have lived for decade upon decade since then, and I have risen in the military, and I have become wealthy, and I have tried to the best of my ability to govern honestly and fairly and justly. And now when I heard of this dispute and that it was about the book of a rabbi, and you showed me the book, and this man was the author of the book. Rabbi Yaakov Yosef of Polnoa was the man I spoke to all of those decades ago. And so now I can tell you he is a holy man and his book should be studied. And you must go home and make peace. And I am going to make peace with my maker, with God. And I am going to prepare to meet him in the next world. And peace was restored in the family and the community. And the old nobleman prepared all of his property and his relatives and made his peace. And a few weeks thereafter, he passed away. And here is what I want you to think about and respond to. First of all, what night of the year do you think this took place? Secondly, what lesson can you come out with from hearing this story? And third, how would you tell the story if you were one of the soldiers that night rather than the general himself? Good luck.